July 20th, 1969. The New York Mets are in the midst of winning their first world championship. The Beatles are making their last album together as a group. And Neil Armstrong is about to take a step that will be long remembered. In the next four weeks, we look at the sequence of events that led up to that memorable step, a step that truly is to be one giant leap for mankind. I'm Lynn Bondurant of the NASA Lewis Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm your host for the next four weeks in our series called Moonwalk. This program highlights the mood of the people just before the Apollo 11 voyage, the anticipation, the apprehension, the feeling in the air that something phenomenal is about to happen. A million mornings forgotten by the mind of man. Dawn remembers again the magic circle, Stonehenge. circle, observatory, temple aligned with the rising of the sun and the turning of the heavens. Stones from afar brought by man to this place where no stones were before, more than 3,000 years ago. Apollo 11, 15 July, 1969, Cape Kennedy, Florida, the night before the great day. We're going to the moon together, pack your bags and jump into the car.
six million pounds of machine, 36 stories tall. Nearly 10 years work of half a million people. Through the night, it was checklisted, double checked, electronically monitored, computerized, televised, dehumanized of human error. While the night of celebration was ending, the day began for the astronauts. Breakfast, medical examination, suiting up. Neil Armstrong, Commander Apollo 11. Edwin Buzz Aldrin, Lunar Module Pilot. Michael Collins, Command Module Pilot. Astronaut Dick Slater, qui avait quitté la salle de préparation pour annoncer et qui voilà vyszedł z pomieszczeń, gdzie ubierają się piloci i La tripulación subirá a la camioneta que les To take them to pad 39A, Slater said everything is going far across the Indian River, 12 miles away, the rocket. At 6.32 a.m., three hours before launch, on pad 39A, Armstrong and Aldrin walked on the surface of the Earth. Their next steps would be on the moon. Spectators rolled in by the thousands. Campers, trailers, cars, and pickups filled the campsites and the beaches, lined the highways, lined the parkways, nose to tailgate, Cape Canaveral to Titusville.
morning. A thin cloud cover about 15,000 feet. Temperature at launch time expected to be about 85 degrees. T minus one hour, 29 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy. Propellant load pressure and temperature. Digital transmission worldwide tracking. Stabilization and guidance. Radio frequency telemetry and voice communications. Signal conditioner integration. Spacecraft electrical power. Flight control. S4B propulsion stage monitoring. S1C, S2 propulsion stage. Every important valve, gauge, and circuit was continually monitored at Launch Control Center throughout the 28-hour countdown. Countdown uh, still going well. T minus 55 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy. Among the 6,000 special guests were a vice president, an ex-president, two plane loads of the diplomatic corps from Washington, 205 U.S. congressmen, 19 governors, 30 senators, 50 mayors from cities across the country, movie celebrities and television personalities, and another two plane loads of dignitaries from Europe. so very different from the morning before or tomorrow morning. This day on which man will leave Earth to walk on the moon, three billion people went about their daily lives, some in the way their ancestors did centuries before, others in a world shaped by modern technology. It seemed that most people were unaware that this event might change the history of the human race, that this morning would be marked in history books and learned by their children's children. In what age of man will the meaning of this morning be understood? control we passed the six minute mark in our countdown for apollo 11 the flight to land of the first men on the moon we're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour coming up shortly that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position this should occur at the five minute mark in the count the swing arm now coming back as our countdown continues Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm now coming back. Four minutes and counting, we are go for Apollo 11. We'll be coming up in the automatic sequence about 10 or 15 seconds from this time. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned, and all is still go as we monitor our status for it. Firing command coming in now. 
transfer on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. Two minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. Oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. T minus one minute, 35 seconds. The third stage completely pressurized. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Good luck and Godspeed. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Six.
five for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. This is Houston, you are go for staging. Board cut off. Come in, board cut off. When Apollo was safely underway, control of the mission was switched to Houston. The months of tightly focused work at the Cape were over. It could honestly be said that this was the culmination of the dreams and fantasies of men and women over 25 centuries of recorded time. James Webb, Marconi, Gilroy, John Hubo, Debus, Laplace, Goddard, Descartes, Marie Curie, Alan Shepard, H.G. Wells, Edward White, John F. Kennedy, Doug Allen, Valentina Tereshkova, Curse, Saucers, Chafee, Grissom, Rene Descartes, Copernicus, Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton, Louis Chelsea, Kepler, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, and Robert Goddard, the American rocket pioneer. Yankee inventor, dreamer. They called him the Moon Man and laughed. But on his own, he went ahead designing, inventing, and testing. His first proving grounds were on his Aunt Effie's farm in Auburn, Massachusetts. The neighbors complained. With a grant from Daniel Guggenheim, he moved to New Mexico with his wife Esther, who was also his camera woman. Goddard had invented and launched the world's first liquid propellant rocket in 1926. And in the end, he accumulated more than 200 patents for everything from multi-staged rockets to fuel pumps and clustered engines. By the year 1930, his rockets achieved a speed of 500 miles per hour and an altitude of 2,000 feet. This was the year in which the three Apollo astronauts were born. Goddard had a vision of the age of space, but the world was too slow to make it happen before his death. Thank you, Robert Goddard, for your inventiveness and perseverance. We can see that all the hoopla surrounding the long-awaited Apollo 11 mission created somewhat of a worldwide carnival atmosphere. 
Very few people remained unaware of this unprecedented journey. Next week, we take a further look into the preparations that were necessary in order for man to survive outside Earth's atmosphere. The show is called Adapting to a Space Environment. I'm Lynn Bondurant.